Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors, America's only daily outdoor TV show. Your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors. I'm Winston Chester. I'm glad you're here this morning. Got a great show lined up, a special guest here in the studio. But first, let's take a look at our weather. Brought to us by Gulf Coast Air Conditioning, Drew Pollard. His hardworking crew taking care of our everyday comfort needs. And how about comfortable today at a high of 80, low 68. Water temperature at the end of the pier, ready for this, right at 73 degrees. I've uh, gotten a kick out of watching the water temperature this year. It's just been, been boom, boom, boom. And so uh, good reports on a lot of good catches over the past three or four days. So we'll talk more about that as the week progresses and we get ready for the weekend. But let's go ahead and take a look at what's going on with our river readings. Uh, brought to us by, this is very interesting enough, so pay attention. Our new sponsor for the River Readings, the Coca-Cola Company of Panama City. We are so proud to have them. We're gonna, I've got some Coca-Cola stories to tell you. That's always been my favorite drink when I was this high. And, uh, I don't drink as much soft drinks as I used to, but I love the Coca-Cola and the Coca-Cola story out of Gaston County and Quincy and all that. I'm going to share that story with you later on, but we're so proud to have Coca-Cola sponsoring our River Readings. Our price goes to Blunstown, 17.1. It's still high. I heard of some fish being caught, but uh, not a lot of them. At Choctatchee Careville, 8.1. It's gone down, but it looks like it's going back up. So that's a big, big up and down right over there in Choctahatchee. But just, you know, each day, sometimes you have to go down there and just look at the river and see what it's doing. And we'll get the readings. Our tide chart brought to us by Kent Forest Lawn. We're in the neap tides for a couple of days, and we'll be picking them up in the next uh, couple of days, about a weekend. Our wind is coming out of the south at about 13, so it's going to be blowing. All right, let's take a break, and we'll be right back. Okay, welcome back, and welcome to our good friend and supporter, Daniel Cole. Good morning. Good morning. How is it? Always great to have you, Daniel. Uh, coming in the, in the studio this morning, we were talking, and somehow the subject of carpenter bees came in. I was talking about a badminton racket that Carol Miller <laughs> and the family were giving me for my birthday present. I just thought it was so cool, and, and uh, <laughs> I asked Daniel if he had a problem with carpenter bees. And go ahead, Daniel. What do you do about them? <laughs> Well, when you got time to do nothing else, you can get a 22 and some rat shot, and it gets you boned up for quail shooting. I cracked up. <laughs> They're hard enough here with a badminton racket, but can you imagine with 22 with some rat shot? But that, that's got to be fun. They, they got to live in an area we can do it. Don't do that in a neighborhood now. <laughs> but uh, anyway, that, that's good. But we're here. Uh, Daniel always comes. He's our boat expert. So much knowledge on the boats and so much experience. And uh, working with Captain Rick over the years, and then you got the business and. And uh, I asked you last night having pictures, but he said, no, I got some books. So uh, tell us about your library and what, what, how we can help our viewers. Well, I'll tell you, one of the things that uh, Rick really instilled in me is, is the importance of constantly growing your knowledge about the marine industry. Mm -hmm. If you're going to be a part of this industry and service your community, you've got to constantly be building on what you have. You can't just be one dimensional, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And, and it's just, just a few, I mean, he gave, he gave me an exhaustive library and I've collected many more, but something I wanted to mention to your viewers is there are several books. This is a good one right here. Mm -hmm. Charlie Wing is an excellent writer. He makes it very simple. And this book here is just how boat things work. And it actually gives you an exploded view inside of several very common things that are found on the boat so that you can quickly diagnose when you have a problem. And, you know, things like that, it, it breaks down various parts of the motors, simple things, uh, you know, just, there's so many different things in there that'll show you how it, it just goes together. It's just yeah. more or less a picture book, but it, yeah, if you yeah. know how that works, yeah. it, uh, you know, whether if you're working on a, well, what's good, a bilge like pump or- Big illustrations, I, yeah. Yeah. And how about knots? We were talking about knots yesterday. Knots, yeah. <laughs> got even knots section here. <laughs> That's so, cool. It's something very handy as a reference work. Uh, another book that he wrote, which uh, probably one of the most confounding things about a boat is the electrical system. Yeah. So many things can happen, so many things can go wrong, so many things. And this right here, really, is same same writer, Charlie Wing, but he, he breaks that all down for you, diagnoses stuff and helps you with stuff. And 
books like this uh, just uh, and, you know we're talking about this I know it sounds so complicated a lot of people but a lot of it is just simple if you keep your color straight well if yeah and, and the other thing is just having it explained it's interesting right. they say a, a picture's worth a thousand words uh, if somebody explains how to do something to you uh, do for uh, how you can do something it's so much easier I mean it can take a, a whole chapter to understand how to do something simple, mm -hmm. you know, in, in a big marine text book, whereas these books break things down smaller, mm -hmm. smaller bites, a little bit easier to understand, a little more self-explanatory. Here's another one, Nigel Calder, Be Your Own Diesel Mechanic. I don't advocate that, but I would say that, <laughs> you know, with a book like this, if you had something simple going on, mm -hmm. it, it helps to diagnose what's going on. And, you know, we've got some really good mechanics in our uh, area, mm -hmm. but they're Right now, there are, many of them are like several weeks to several months out. So if there's something you could understand on your own and be able to, to do something small yeah. you know, on your own, you'd save yourself all that time of being down mm -hmm. just by having a few books and being able to, to read and understand something simple enough to do it. And that's kind of what I focused on. These books are, are very simple to understand. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm anything but a marine mechanic, but I, when I read this book on marine diesel engines, it so simplified things that even I could understand that. Oh, cool. so, <laughs> so just things like that are things that you know will really help. Mm -hmm. You know, and yeah, that's cool. And, and you're, you're right. We we have a shortage. I met. Mean, I don't know if we have a shortage of uh, marine repair guys. We have so many people with boats now, and, right. and we just haven't grown exponentially with the with the uh, population. So everyone, I've, every marine mechanic I've talked to at different places, they're about a month out. Yeah, uh, and uh, I, I was at BJ's Marine. I talked to Roger just the other day, and he he's flat out a month out. And he has people, and he I tell you what he's got now. Uh, of course, all the locals know him because they depend on him. But then, a lot of folks come in from out of town to watch the show or something, and, and they they have heard good things about him, so they go to him, and and uh, he he's had a really good response from you know people that's moved in or or they're just visiting for a couple of months. Right. So, so that's good, but the understanding is has some basic knowledge, uh, and I talk to him sometimes about these repairs. Sometimes it's something very simple, and of course sometimes you got to take the foot off and, and do this and do that, and only a marine mechanic can do that. But uh, I, I, I get tickled sometimes with the stories he tells me how simple some of the stuff is. Well, mine, I've been so busy I hadn't been able to use it, and it, at, the steering actually froze up on my boat. And it was time to service it, so uh, I had mechanic come out, and... Uh, I did not know the steering was froze up until he started servicing the thing. It had been that long since I had it in the water, but yeah. it, he went ahead and got everything serviced. And for me, I mean, I'm, I'm I'm good with some things, but you know, I'm not the most mechanically inclined person. So I was glad that I got a professional to do mm -hmm. what he did. Yeah. But you know, after watching what all he did, you know, you had it wasn't it wasn't as difficult as it would seem mm -hmm. if you had someone to tell you how. Right. Right. So it. And and it's still for me, you know, these guys are making a living. I, if I've got the time, I'd much rather pay someone to let them do it because they've got to feed their family too. Yeah, but right. if 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 you were really in a jam, a simple library can save you so much money and time. And no, that's uh, cool. That's cool. All right, take a uh, quick break. We'll be right back. Okay, well, welcome back. Daniel and I can't decide whether to talk about quail hunting or boats or fishing, but it's, it's all fun. I was telling about what a good quail hunt we had the other day. So, uh, have you had a chance to do any? Lately? Not since last time I was on. Yeah, yeah. Good, good dogs and weather. It's about wrapped up, like I said last time. A couple of announcements. I, Mary Swanson asked me, Mary, if you're watching this morning, here's a phone number. You asked about the young man that made a pompano jigs. Uh, Jason Griffin, he's called a Griff Jigs. Uh, 481 9333 and be sure and uh and uh, give him some business i you know he, he does that part time i can promise you only when, he, when he's making jigs and all because we, we've done that kind of stuff it's labor intensive you're not making a lot of money you sort of doing it because you have a passion for doing it and, and you sort of want to help people catch pumping and all but uh you're not going to get rich off it you got it you got the manufacture of them and you got the distribution of them and it, that's, that's hard to do to tackle Tackle business is, is a tough business. A lot of a lot of knockoffs and everybody copying it. Well, uh, he's been doing. Have you had time doing kind of outdoor things? Not really. 
Have you been that busy? Just been that busy, yeah. We've had so much going on. Yeah. I, I got tickled. Uh, I talked to a guy the other day, the old Carter craft boat. Mm -hmm. And he, he I, I tell you where I was, the Qantas Pancake Days uh, last last Friday. And the fellow with a lot of Qantas people there and the, the, the good fundraisers for their organization. And the guy asked me, Coach, you still have that Carter craft boat? Not, not many people ask me that because most people don't even know about the Carter craft. And I said, no, actually, I sold it to George Gaynor. I want to see if he wants to sell it back, though. But this, but this <laughs> particular guy had found one. It was up in, uh, I want to say, South Carolina, and there was one more in Indiana. But that was interesting because, wow. it, and I asked him, uh, you know, the price he paid for it was not exorbitant. It was, it was a pretty good, pretty good price. But uh, he and I, he, he fell in love with him. He said when he was a boy, his dad was in the Air Force, and they rented a trailer across the road from where Mr. Carter was building the boats. Hmm. And his dad was transferred, but he later settled here and he wanted to, uh, found, he wanted to find out about the Carter Crafts. He was able to, to get this one, so that, that's neat. So, but all along the Florida Panhandle, these handmade boats, the river bateau, and everybody made their own boats. I know some of you folks down your way did. Sure did. I helped build quite a few of those oyster skiffs for, for friends and family down there. The oyster skiffs, did y'all have a plan to go by, or how, how y'all just did it? Uh, pretty much. Uh, the old timers just had it all in their head. Yeah, just had They'd it. They'd cut it, measure it, and start putting it together, and it'd just go together. Cause they'd done it so long, yeah. you know. A lot of the community there was uh, either Greek or uh, Italian, and they had spent time, you know, some of them brought skills from their old countries. And, yeah. You know, Appalachia has such a large contingency of those two groups, so it's uh, Generation after generation of being on an island, being on the water. Yep. They, they had those boat building skills. I, I remember uh, there's a, uh, an old fellow, John N. Vathis, that used to did help him and uh, his boys build them. And uh, there was a, another fellow named Pete Polaronis, and uh, yes. he used to build a lot of boats. And In fact, before really anyone knew what Marine Surveyor was, Pete was the only Marine Surveyor down in Apalachicola in that area. And yeah. So uh, growing up with them guys, I mean, I, I really got to see a lot of cool stuff. Did, all, uh, did you ever get to help out any doing yeah, that? Yeah, sure did. Well, I was always curious about, uh, they use marine plywood now, but way back, what was it before we really had marine plywood? Well, how would they do that? They were using uh, cypress plywood. And, cypress, uh, okay. Yeah, because uh, cedar, because it, you know, I, I don't know what treatment they did yeah. with it, but once they put that on it, you know, they would paint the outside, leave the inside uncoated, and then it would drain, you know, it would dry yeah. like it's supposed to. <clears throat> did they haul those boats out uh, uh, each year to treat them, you know, to haul them out to sort of get out the water, or do they leave them in the water most of the time? You know, most of them uh, don't leave them in the water. They haul them every day. Okay. I remember, uh, you know, my friend Alex, uh, he, when he'd go oyster and he'd always pull his boat every day. It was a wood boat that they'd built from scratch there in the yard. And yeah. They'd hose everything down. They'd hose the motors down. I mean, it'd, it'd take almost a two-hour ritual every day they came in, but their stuff worked and they ran it for years. Well, see, and that's part of our culture we talk about all the time, and that's a little unique area there because that was their livelihood. Mm -hmm. they, the boat had to work, and, and the motor had to work, and, and they, had to, they couldn't go buy one of those. They had to build it. I, that's right. In fact, at one time, I don't know if it's still down, they were talking about putting a, a, a nautical museum down there, I let's go to boat building, mm -hmm. marine. Is that down there? I know. So we developed, what, what happened, I know what happened initially, the area they were going to put it in, some developer bought it and put a restaurant in there. But yeah. I don't know about it, if it's still there. They did at one point. I don't know if it's still active or not. Okay. I, they did I, have uh, it, though? They were teaching small yeah. projects. Yeah. That's right. How, they how were to build a boat. And uh, there's, uh, there's, there's the building still there. I think it still has some stuff in it. But okay. It's, uh, but I haven't been there in years, and I don't know what they're doing, if it's still active or not. I haven't checked that in, in years either. I know one time they were doing it. Next time I'm down that area. When I'm down that way next check time, it out. I'll, I'll see what I can find out. Because you just don't see that kind of stuff much anymore. I'm talking about preserving the heritage, the old boat building mm -hmm. heritage and all. Okay, we're going to take our final break. We'll be right back with Daniel. Okay, welcome back. This is Daniel Cole talking about all kinds of things. Let's take a look at our fishing game time today. Brought to us by Blue Water Outriggers in Port St. Joe. Our one time today, 1047 or 1247. And don't forget, Thursday night, the full moon. 
of April. It's coming right, right around the corner and all. Uh, Y'all are so good about responding about, uh, yesterday I was talking about things to do in April, and uh, one of them I said, you know, look at the flowers, send pictures of flowers. Right after the show, Candace Trent sent me some flower pictures. Check this out. My flowers are beautiful. Big magnolia trees full. And look at there. You know, wow. Is that not, look at that. I mean, is that just, that's not man-made, folks. <laughs> but look at the magnolia. That, wow. That's a real magnolia. Isn't that beautiful? Beautiful. I absolutely love the magnolia trees this time of year. They, they're blooming <clears throat> all throughout. And then we've got one more. Wow. Thank you, Candy, for sharing that with us. That, that'll brighten the day. And, and uh, that's what I'm talking about, different things. Also coming up, I'm going to mention this. A week from today, the FWC has a <coughs> workshop, uh, April the 11th in Okaloosa County. So this is going to be on gopher tortoise conservation. And it's, okay, there's a gopher tortoise. It's not a box turtle now, it's different. And it's going to be at Okaloosa County at, from 9 a.m. to noon. That's going to be at the convention center there for you folks on the western end of our viewing area. If you want to learn about it and see what the workshop's about, we're here to inform you about it. So, anyway, uh, do you see, talking about turtles and all, do you see many box turtles? you see much turtles or anything around? Or? A lot of them crossing the road. I've, I've been busy, and, and they say this is the time of year, so. They are, and I was going to, you know, because we had uh, Molly, Molly on before, Molly Adams was talking about a box turtle project, and I was walking a Sunday afternoon, I was walking through, uh, across the road and looking uh, a little property across the road, a piece of property I have, and lo and behold, folks, lo and behold, I, I had to stop and take a, a selfie because I didn't, uh, let me see, I can't find it now, but it's, it's in there somewhere. I, had, I found a box turtle. I, can't, I don't have a picture of it, but uh, I, here it is. I do have it. Okay. First of all, here we go, right here. That's a box turtle <laughs> across the road over there. I'm going to send that to Candy. There is it's a baby one, so I want to make it look bigger, so I'll hold them next to it. That's how you do, that's how you do your fish, right? <laughs> that's right. <laughs> you know, but uh, here, let me show you the size. That's the size of them. It, it was a small one. Oh, right well, the little guy. Yeah. So anyway, they are moving around. I, I'm going to send Molly a, a picture this morning and tell her I named the turtle after her. I don't know if it's male or female, but we're going to call it, call it Molly. But I didn't have a number. I was going to write a number on it, but I didn't think right with it. They, they, they track these mock turtles and all. It's really, gotcha. really fascinating. Okay, we've got uh, coming up in the springtime. I was yesterday talking about different things to do in the springtime. What do you want to try to do in outdoors in April or May and maybe into June? What's some of your goals? Yeah, me and my wife really just wanted to get back to doing some, some freshwater fishing. We've got some friends in the neighborhood that come by. They are really doing good in the Apache River in a couple of places. And, uh, oh, yeah. You know, we've got a couple of places we like to go, and uh, we've just, we haven't had time, but we just said we're going to make some time and go do some freshwater fishing. I, I like to fly fish. I like to, I like to, you know, bobber fish, whatever it is that's going on. Mm -hmm. I, I, you and I are the same boat. I, I have great intention. The girl and I want to go. And we are going to do it. So I'm going to hold you accountable for the next time you come <laughs> on. I'm going to see how many, how many times <clears throat> y'all have been. Then I'm going to tell you how many times we've been. I, I really got a little project going. I got to get it finished, tearing down, tearing down my old boathouse. But uh, a lot of people have freshwater fishing on their mind right now. Well, we should have our uh, our mayfly bloom coming up before too long. I was thinking with all this, you know, all that water being pushed back in the sloughs and all, mm -hmm. it's really giving a lot of a lot of water moisture to those trees and it might speed it up. It's our spring our spring flood, you know. We always have these spring floods. That's right. And then it starts dropping back down and the weather starts heating up. They, they call them mayflies for a reason. That's right. Now, I know you love to do it. Uh, uh, when do you normally start? The end of April or out of the middle? When, when do you start? It, it depends. It, uh, when the mayflies start showing up, that's when they really start hitting on top, and that's when I, I start looking for somewhere to fly fish. Do you go, yeah. you go off the Apalachicola River system, just in different places, or pond? I or? don't because it's, a, it's so swift. Uh, you know, I, I, uh, I really like you can find a creek. Okay, good. Uh, now, I know there's some great fly fishing down around uh, parts of Wee Wall and other places like that, too. Yeah, yeah. But uh, just for me, just to have time to go drop the boat in, it's handy to get on Econ Fina and you get a big full moon and you know, you're willing to stay where it's a little bit later. Yeah. They start popping. Where do you get your flies from? Uh, usually C and G. Okay. They, they've yeah. got a good assortment of, uh, of flies and uh, I have uh, 
I tried tying some of my own, but I just don't have the patience and it the skill. It takes time to do that. It does. I, I, I don't have it. So, but but CG has been really good about you know they've got several local guys that bring their stuff in there. And exactly. So yeah. They they've got some good quality flies there. I like using. Well, that, and that's the thing about it. I, you take a certain pride in catching something which you made a made a jig or fly. But again, you know, not so much time in a day. <laughs> and, that's uh, right. But uh, and you already have your what, what size fly reel and all that do you use? Well, for up there, I like like a six, seven rod. Okay. You know something. You never know because I've had bass hit a, a fly, so it's yeah. I like something a little bit bigger because otherwise, you know, you get something too small and it's just stripping out line and you can't hardly get it back. Yeah. But, but uh, I I like a six, seven rod. I, I I may have a five, but I I, I like yeah. smaller stuff like that, but still with enough backbone. That's good too. Uh, let's just jump over on the on the inshore real quick. That's freshwater. We've got it covered. Uh, Cause I'm I'm just like you. I'm looking forward to it. But I tell you what, the last couple of days, a lot of got received a lot of pictures of uh, flounder. The flounder bot has been on fire the last oh, good. three or four days. Yeah, I mean I, I'll show you the picture tomorrow. I'm trying to get into them today. And ran into some folks <coughs> folks down there at, uh, at uh, Weeball, Mexico Beach, and uh, they've all been doing well. And, and uh, also, one of our big guys that goes all the time, uh, he, he, he took his daughter out and they got like four big ones, some really big ones this time of year. I was really surprised. So, uh, that's on fire. We're going to have to start wrapping up. Uh, what else you got? Just looking forward to fly fishing? and Yeah, pretty much. You got to work too, right? You got a little bit of work to do? We're busy. Can you get caught up? No, we typically this time of year we run, you know, a few, three to four weeks out, you know. Oh, cool. But uh, we try to get everybody covered. When anybody comes up, they've yeah. got a special situation. We definitely try to work them on in so that they're not waiting. So good for you, and that's a good problem to have. Yeah. Okay. Appreciate it, Daniel. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Okay, folks, enjoyed uh, having you uh, as our viewer today. We appreciate you, and want to make sure uh, you do good things for someone else. You have a great day, and God bless. Thanks for watching America's only daily outdoor TV show, Van Handle Outdoors with Winston Chester, featuring hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle Outdoors.